we have in common with our governor as well, which is in all three of our cases, before going into public service, we spent years, formative years, important years, in the private sector. Uh, working in highly innovative, competitive companies that were engaged in export. I think that is a lot uh, of why you get it, why you're a tremendous leader in SBA, and even more importantly uh, for me, day in and day out, why our governor gets it. We have an amazing governor. In Jack Markell, we have a tireless advocate for Delaware, and I hope those of you who are not Delawareans and do not yet know him will actually take us up on what I will join you in, a shared challenge to get to know us better. Uh, just a week ago, we were uh, with Johnson Controls as we were doing a groundbreaking on a new plant where they are tripling the size, uh, investing in creating a new state-of-the-art battery manufacturing facility, uh, tripling the size of a 50-year-old auto battery plant in Middletown, Delaware. A bunch of guys had flown in from headquarters, and they were expecting the usual rah-rah, you know, check, hi, they're great, you know, throw a little dirt, get on the plane, go home. And after spending time meeting our governor and talking with some other folks who happened to be there, they, one of them turned to me and said, are you sure you're all Democrats? <laughs> I said, yes, we are. Why do you ask? He said, I have never met a more tireless, engaged, enthusiastic, and responsive bunch of folks in public service. I don't mean to pick on parties or mention anything partisan. I'm just suggesting that they were not expecting the level of enthusiasm, engagement, and responsiveness they got from our governor, from our senior senator, Tom Carper, represented here today by Jeff Dayton, from our congressman, John Carney, uh, and from Alan Levin, uh, the excellent Secretary of Economic Development here for Delaware. We've got a great team, so if you haven't given us a chance, please come give Delaware a significant opportunity. As county executive, uh, I was active in the Select Greater Philadelphia Initiative, uh, something the Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce and some the CEO Council of Growth have both really led, something our governors also supported, because uh, as the Secretary and I were talking about, we really are part of the Philadelphia ecosystem, uh, and we recognize if we're going to fight and win, for the new markets and the new jobs that are the focus of the NEI. We have to be a coherent regional engine creating jobs for our people and competing successfully against the other regions of the world. Uh, I'm grateful for a chance to be here. Dr. Lonnie George, thank you for hosting us today. Delaware Technical and Community College is a great resource. And when I was at W.O. Bourne Associates, uh, an innovative materials-based science company, we took advantage of Dell Tech as a great training resource that could work with us in a way that helped us strengthen our manufacturing. We also work with an engine that is within the Department of Commerce, the Manufacturing Extension Partnership. If you don't know about it, it is a great gem. Whatever state you're in, there is a Manufacturing Extension Partnership, which as the governor and I were talking about, is a great contributor to the bottom line of Delaware. Helps manufacturers up and down the state streamline their uh, execution on uh, deliveries and orders and be more competitive locally and globally. In my first six months as, the, as a senator on four committees, I focused on one thing that I just wanted to mention to you today before introducing the Secretary of Commerce, and that's patent reform. I was proud to be a co-sponsor of the patent reform bill. We actually managed to get it out of the Judiciary Committee and out of the Senate, and it now waits over in the House. And I recently wrote an op-ed about what enormous potential lies in the Patent and Trademark Office. And folks, this Secretary of Commerce gets it. He's someone who understands that only by investing in innovation by streamlining that process, by reducing the waste time, wait time, by making it more responsive to business, can we unlock the creative potential of American innovators and the potential exports of their inventions and the growth that could come uh, from there. Uh, one of the other reasons uh, I was grateful for the opportunity to sit with Secretary Locker earlier this week uh, in my capacity as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee is that he's a former county executive. Every time I get to spend time with someone who has slogged through the unique joys of county government, uh, it makes me feel better. It's sort of a shared pain kind of moment. He went from there to two terms of leadership uh, as the governor of the state in America that is most connected to the international economy. The state of Washington is the most export dependent or the most export winning uh, state in our whole country. Uh, and since his appointment as the 36th Secretary of Commerce of the United States, Secretary Locke has shown that he's not just the master of the Patent and Trademark Office, not just the master of the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, the master of the U.S.-China relationship, of the American relationship with the world. Uh, when our president says we need to double exports, he can turn to this man and rely on him for leadership, for energy, and for execution. When he was governor of the state of Washington, he doubled that state's exports to China and created 280,000 new jobs. So frankly, um, even though I am excited to have him and his wife Mona and their three kids in a new role representing us in China, one of our most important strategic relationships for the long term, 
I'm not going to rush on that confirmation vote because he's got some great and important work to finish out in his last few months as our Secretary of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a really strong Delaware welcome to Secretary Gary Locke.